Hi, Ben. Hi, Sace. <laughs> <laughs> I always have in my head, how am I going to start this podcast? And I just went with Hi, Ben. So Perfect. there we go. I love that. You think she did a high tech clap just before, which I know. we were laughing at. No one will have seen that, but there was a no. clap and we have now started uh, recording. <laughs> So it's so nice to have you here on the podcast. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about you and what you do, and I'm sure you're going to give us lots of words of wisdom. But the first question I ask all my guests is, what's the last thing you did that positively impacted your health? Um, I have a morning routine that um, I love, and uh, I'm really lucky because I don't have a commute. My commute's from my, my living room to my bedroom. Nice. I know, my bedroom to my living room. <laughs> And um, <laughs> working from bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I sleep in my living room. Um, yeah, and it's 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 a lovely way to start the day. I, I I do change it up, but at the moment I'm in this. I've got this sort of morning playlist that kind of it's quite weird actually. I'm gonna sound like a weirdo from the from from the off bits. Kind of all these <laughs> kind of Amazon sort of tropical noises that makes me sort of feel like I'm waking up in in a, in a jungle. Oh, and, that's um, nice. But it's nice, yeah, and it kind of it's like it's like pan pipes and all these, like, and it's just it, for me, it's really natural and it's lovely and it's a wonderful way to start the day. And then I'm really into affirmations at the moment, so then I have affirmations. Um, actually, before that, I do a stretch and a meditation, and then I go into affirmations um, with my lemon juice, and um, uh, and then I'm ready for the day. And um, yeah, it's I just love that sort of routine. I'm lucky. Mo I think most people are on a train, mm. sort of eyeball to eyeball with strangers, and. Um, yeah, I get to do that. Yeah, so I feel very lucky. when you work from home, you've literally got all of the seconds up until nine a.m. or wh wherever you start work yeah. to do what you want. Yeah, have you have you always done that morning routine, or yeah. is that kind of something you've done quite recently? Yeah, it's recent. I mean, I've probably had a morning routine for the last sort of few years. Um, it's become more structured, um, and I change it. You know, in the past, I've I've done things like where I've I've stood in the mirror and I've made myself laugh. I've kind of had a laughing fit for a couple of minutes to try and get energy and kind of laughter. I want to get better at laughter. Wow, Sounds stupid, good for you. And sometimes I've done dancing and things like that. Or, but at the moment, it's um, yeah, it's affirmations and it's that sort of Amazonian uh, music and stretches. So it adapts, but I always have a sort of 45 minute chunk that's my time in yeah. the morning. And is that because when you wake up, you feel like you're unprepared for the day and you need to do something 45 minutes that's going to kind of get you ready and raring to go? Or is it just... Because I don't know, this whole like morning routine thing. Firstly, like it's all over YouTube. Secondly, you'll get everyone talking about their morning routine. And I just kind of feel like it's just things that people do that make them feel happy, right? Just yeah. to put you in a good place. And we've and and the wellness industry has just been very good at kind of like labeling it as the hashtag morning routine. <laughs> yeah, and I think you, you, people should find their own. Mm. You know, it's important, and mind changes. But for me, it, um, I, I, when I say I enjoy it in the moment, I'm not. It's not like instant gratification. Where I'm going, oh, wow, I'm having the time of my life. This is amazing. But I'm able to enjoy the the, the knowledge that this is giving me. What serves me better for the rest of the day. Mm. So it's kind of a deeper sort of sense of I'm starting the day off on a right chord here. Yeah. Um, in getting to know myself, in sort of stretching myself out, so feeling like I'm, I mean, I'm so unflexible, I need to, but at least I've, I've worked that bit of me. And yeah. it just, it feels like I'm setting myself up for the day. Yeah. Um, and that's a, a good intention, a good place to, to get cracking with. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, isn't it? Because when you look at nature, when you're just saying about stretching there, the first thing like a dog or a cat will do when they wake up is they'll do that amazing stretch where they put their paws out in front of them and they stretch out their back. And human, we're animals too, but there's something about us, I think it's like maybe it's the our intelligence, you know, our brain and stuff, that we're just so quick to override our primal needs, if that makes mm. sense. Like we're... We might think, oh, I feel a bit stiff, but, you know, you just kind of dumb down any kind of symptom with like a, a coffee or a stimulant or whatever else it is and just go about your day. Whereas you'd never you'd never not see a cat stretching out after they woke up. Totally. It's so interesting. We're used to uh, to quick fixes these days, aren't we? Yeah. Just take something that, so the coffee, like you say, is, is such a great example. I yeah. feel so tired when I wake up. I know I have a coffee yeah. and that will stimulate me. Yeah, because we have the intelligence to know how to plug that hole with, with something kind of artificial, I guess. Completely, yeah. totally, yeah. And it's, um, yeah, I think part of the game of life is is actually stripping it back to, to actually get into a place where you're serving yourself at a deeper place mm. rather than chasing the quick wins mm. that serve you in that moment. But fundamentally, are, are they better for you? Yeah. And I'm not sure a lot of them are, if I'm yeah. honest. 
So, Ben, let's talk about you. Um, mm. I'd love you to introduce yourself to my podcast listeners. Um, just a little bit about your journey to where you are now and how you got there and what you do would be amazing. Oh, I struggle to keep this short, but I'm, I'm going to try because I never know where to start. Um, so I'm a, a coach, a public speaker and a writer. I'm writing a book at the moment, so I've kind of added that to the list. Um, uh, I put myself as a mindset and purpose coach because that's kind of the journey that I've been on, I guess, myself. Um, I'd say my mindset was 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 an unhealthy operating system back for the first 30 years of my life. Mm. Um, not my fault. No one taught me otherwise. I never really heard the word mind for mm. the first 30 years of my life. No one taught me how it worked. Um, so I was kind of just finding my own way and, and I, the way I was behaving was probably not really serving me. And um, so the first 30 years of my life, I lived I lived in a way where there were a lot of quick wins, a lot of kind of ticking boxes and a lot of external sort of visual um, wins that people say, oh, Ben's living a great life, you know, it's all, that looks good. Mm. But inside I was feeling quite empty and just sort of, is this all life is about? Um, I remember people saying, some, Ben, you're living the dream. And I remember thinking, if this is living the dream, I'd hate to not live it because... You mean like the good job and yeah, prospects? Yeah, the good job and, and the girls and the parties and the money and the flat and, you know, just ticking all the boxes that, yeah. you know, you're ta- you think that you want to chase when you're, when you're a young boy, for me anyhow. And, um, yeah, and it was, it was just a bit of a sort of empty existence, really, inside, on the inside, how I actually felt. And um, at the age of 30, I, I, a life coach came to my life by accident, really, um, and... Uh, she said a few things that pushed a few buttons inside of me, and I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. I've never sort of thought about things that way. And um, I started working with her specifically, and maybe we'll come to this later, but specifically around a challenge I had around sex. And um, if it wasn't for that challenge around sex, I don't think I would have worked with her, if I'm honest. Although she said these things, I was, I was really thinking, hmm, bit woo-woo, you know. Yeah, kind not of, for me. Not for me. Like, I don't need all that stuff. I'm just cracking on. And for me, you know, it's about making um, the best of what you've got and... For me, that's that's you know I'm, I'm I am what I am, so I just crack on and do what I can with that. And she was like, "You can be whatever you want to be," and I was like, "No, I don't think I am, but I, I'll give it a crack." So I want to change this 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 aspect around sex. Mm. So for the next sort of few months, we worked together, but we never once talked about sex. She was just rewiring how my mind was thinking, and um, uh, I started to change. And I noticed sort of little things, like I I started to share with my mum that I loved her, and I remember sending her some flowers and with a card saying, Mum, I never tell you, but I really appreciate you and and I really love you. And something I never did in my first 30 years, but I I absolutely felt it. You know, I I knew how special my mum was and how lucky I was. So that I was like, that's a nice thing. I did that now. I do feel, although it was hard and it felt like, oh, Ben, are you sure you want to do this? It did feel good on the inside. Mm. And I guess this was the start of my journey. I was starting to serve myself on the inside and stopping serving kind of what I felt and what I was seeing externally. And... um, and yeah, eight years on, I'm now 38. Um, having gone through the journey of change myself and knowing how shut off I was, I'm kind of like, I want to help other people go on that journey. I know how much better it feels on the inside to live in the way that I do now than, than how I did in, in my 20s. So, And I know how hard and adamant I was against change. So now I want to help people go through a similar journey and get more out of their life. And um, it's, it's a very topical um, conversation at the moment, mental health, and uh, which is what it comes down to for me, although I'd rather call it mindset health, mm. um, and particularly around masculinity. And mm. um, yeah, I find myself in this space where people are looking for spokesmen, particularly men, to talk in this space vulnerably, openly, yeah. emotionally. And um, I'm kind of like, hey, this is, I, I, I want to do that. Yeah. Why, why do you think it is that, because like you were saying before we went on air, women like we love talking about this stuff yeah. like we will happily and we and we kind of we have that um dialogue open with our girlfriends if we need to and we have that dialogue open with our mothers if we need it to be there some of us use it and some of us don't but why do you think that it is so different for men do you think it goes back to to kind of biology and you know the hunter gatherer and being the bit. strong one and the tough one it's something I'm so keen to investigate more in my book, actually. Cause, um, I, what, what, men have got higher testosterone levels, mm-hmm. and I do wonder if the higher testosterone levels are geared towards the hunter-gatherer aspect back in the day of where higher testosterone levels would have us more geared towards safety mm. and, and being more aware and, and being um, more geared towards leading and, and, and looking after the people around us. And in this day and age now, I wonder if that similar um, biolog- biological makeup 
serves us so well because there aren't the threats and the challenges around us like there were back then but we become still very much in our head, we live very much in our head looking for the threats and challenges and trying to make sense of everything and be very rational. Yeah. And that takes us away from our emotions, which is more what we feel. I, I, would, I would sort of counter that in the sense that although the, the challenges of like being eaten by a bear have disappeared, we actually all are stressed on a chronic level all the time anyway. So maybe that's particularly why mental health for men is becoming such an issue now because rather than having that one big stressor of I need to protect my family now or I need to kill this thing so I need to eat it it's low grade stress on our brains on our bodies taxing us 24 7 so of course you're never really going to switch into that state of like how do I feel do I need to rest like do I need to nurture myself so I need to sleep. And then and that's where the kind of good stuff happens, isn't it? When you give yourself that space to actually just, you know, how am I feeling? Totally. But I think, you know, we're, we're both saying a very similar thing there, actually, because for me, mm. you're totally right. We do live in this stress, this stress space. But do we need to? And should mm. we? And is it healthy for us? And I think actually the kind of the path of masculinity is almost there's almost bragging rights around being, oh, yeah, I'm really so busy right now. Totally. I'm, I'm burning the candle at both ends. I'm out here and I'm getting up early and I'm doing this and look how much money I'm earning and look at the car and I've got this. Look at everything going on in my life. And yeah, actually, I never stop for a second and actually connect with myself. But all the boxes are being ticked for what society says is success. Well done, me. And even if I'm feeling really stressed on the inside, everyone else is impressed. So mm. that's how I'm going to live. And yeah. It's kind of almost that's almost being ambitious, you know. For mm. me, it's almost that's an ambitious is seen as healthy, and I'm almost opposite of that now. And saying, look, if we're talking about gratitude, which gratitude obviously is blown up, gratitude is almost the opposite in many ways of ambition. You know, ambition is always you, you can live. I think particularly as a man, we can live in a space where we're never satisfied. Whereas we do the deal, and it's like, yeah, I've done that one. We're going to do the bigger one now. Wait till wait till you see what I've got in store play this chasing game and, and and it seems healthy and people go look how driven he is it's so great wow he's a real you know go getter and um actually for me we're, we're living in a space where we're never actually thankful for what we have got we're constantly chasing what we haven't mm. and is that a healthy space to be so i totally hear you that yes um men do live in that space and i'm, I'm just questioning if that's a healthy space to mm. live you know are you actually feeling good on the inside yeah and then in your coaching practice how would you go about like what would be some of the mechanisms that you would use with someone to kind of uh, take them out of that space, let's say? So fundamentally, the journey for me is, is getting out of your head and, and I say into your, into your inner energy, your heart and soul's energy, because your heart and soul is where your emotions live, um, where your creativity, where your purpose, all, all the deeper stuff. Mm. Um, whereas your, your head, your ego is constantly chasing the quick wins and the ticking the boxes. And because it's safer, it's conforming, you know, you're fitting in with society and our, our ego feels safe when we're, we're when we're fitting in so i try and take people out of that out of that headspace and into their hearts so less thinking who should i be and more feeling or who actually what's going on inside of me what's my what's that internal gps what's that saying to me where's that trying to take me mm. who do i really want to be on the inside if i wasn't con concerned about everyone else's judgments so it's about distinguishing between the two energies, you know, our, 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 our ego chasing the external stuff, the ticking the boxes and connecting more with our internal energy that knows us best, knows us at our core, that, that is in charge of how we feel. Mm. And um, yeah, going on that journey. Now we do need a balance, you know, we do need safety. So it's not going sc screw our thoughts and totally screw our, our ego and, you know, screw ambition and all that stuff, it's saying at the moment we're going all in on that stuff and we're thinking that's entirely healthy and I'm just asking us to readdress the balance a bit to bring our heart and soul alive but still staying safe, still having that, that ambition but in a healthier way so that it's in tune with who we are and the path that we're on and we can feel more alive on the inside and more fulfilled ultimately mm. on the inside. If, if someone were to look at your imagery on like social media channels or website, or whatever it might be, You'd be tempted to say that the images are unsafe purely because, um, and for anyone that doesn't follow Ben already, he is at the naked professor, naked being the operative <laughs> word here. Um, you, you kind of try and take everything that you've just been saying and put it in a visual sense in a quite stark way, excuse the pun, because you're often standing naked in a, a scene, whether it's like a London cityscape or somewhere in nature. The reason behind that presumably is kind of like stripping the masks of masculinity, kind of stepping outside your comfort zone. 
Totally, both of those things. And you just, actually, the word you said before was unsafe. Mm. You know, it's not safe. And actually, that's, I've never really described it that way before, but it is, that's exactly it because yeah. our, our head, our thoughts are safe. Well, because it's risky. It's like, it's well, risky. am I allowed to do this in public? Yeah. What if someone sees me? Totally. You know? Yeah, you can get arrested for doing that wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Uh, it's not safe. It's not normal. It's not following the crowd. It's, it's, um, it's, it, it, it's a, 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 um, a statement of vulnerability. You mm. know, it's not an easy thing to do. I'm exposed. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm bearing my soul. You know, there's no masks here. There's 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 nothing to hide. It's everything is here to be seen. And um, uh, I guess I should explain. I'm back to camera. It's not. Yeah, a, <laughs> it's not full frontal. No, there is a line, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's also, I guess, you know, holding my hands up. It's also playing the game. You know, Instagram is a very visual station. And um, uh, if I wrote what I wrote without a hook to capture people's yeah. imagination or to get them questioning why. Um, what I'm writing about, they, they wouldn't without that kind of imagery. Yeah, that that was something I was going to ask you actually, mm. without you seeming to be kind of rude, but it was it was the question that are you just posing naked because you know it's going to get more likes and more engagement. But then at the same time, if you actually have a really important message that you need to like cut through the algorithm with, then go for it in a way. I, I hate it. I really hate it and I think it's really unhealthy. And actually, I haven't posted any imagery of, of me naked at all recently for, for quite a while yeah. and, um, because I want it to be about my message. But I use that hook at the beginning mm. to try and get people in. And, and it, I won't ever lose that. You know, the naked aspect is, is, is a kind of a USP, if you like. And I want yeah, to and it for... kind of fits with the message. It does. Your message. It's, it's, I do feel like it's different than a girl just posing provocatively in a bikini because what's the message behind that if there isn't one it, it is literally just for the likes or for the engagement whatever yeah. for people's prying eyes but at least with you there's there's the kind of mirroring of nakedness between the imagery and the sentiment of what you're trying to get across to people so and that's really important for me and I'm glad thank you for saying that because it is important but at the same time I don't want it to be the be all and end all mm. so that's why I try and balance it now and um, if I wanted to play the lights game, you know, every time I'm, I don't have any clothes on in, a, in an iconic place, you know, the engagement goes off through the roof. Yeah. And if I post a picture of me doing a talk in front of a load of men, you know, the engagement is way lower and less people see it. So I, I'm, I'm frustrated with the Insta Instagram algorithm, as are a lot of other people, yeah. fundamentally, because I think it's just asking everyone to take all their clothes off, yeah. if I'm being honest. Like, totally. That's where the engagement lives. Mm. And uh, God knows what it's doing to teenagers who are looking at this platform just seeing more and more people just posing constantly in their underwear in their mm. bikinis or swimwear or whatever it is. Yeah, and there was also something I saw recently going slightly off topic now, but it was um it was in I think it made the the newspapers, but there was a girl who had uh digitally enhanced her face. Like she'd kind of blown up her lips and she'd given herself ridiculous cheekbones and like eye makeup and stuff. And she posted that picture and then she posted another picture, which was just her face, and she got zero likes on her face, and everyone loved the one that was didn't look anything like her. And it's just like, what are we doing? And the problem being is that it's enhanced with the algorithm that yeah. they measure the engagement. The more engagement there is, it shows it to everybody. And you know, you know, mm. Whereas if it's low engagement, then they won't show it to many people. So you can put your heart and soul into a message. But with a, just a, a, an average photo, yeah, and it's and crushing when won't see it. I know. And you're like, oh, so that's so people. Then I've got to put this picture of me not wearing any clothes on because I want people to read the message. And yeah, but I guess you know, Instagram started as a visual platform, and they're not after the the written mm. message so much. I don't know, but yeah, it just worries me as to what's what it's going to do to to, mm. to teenagers growing up. Yeah, thinking I've got to to you know, if I want likes and popularity, which is for me, my ego is constantly chasing. Yeah. Uh, then that's then the kind of pictures I need to post. And I'll edit myself if I need to, because that's what everyone does. Yeah, it's become the norm, hasn't become it? Become the norm. Yeah. Yeah, awful. Um, I wanted to talk to you about nature, because in these photos, these naked photos that we're talking about, quite often, like you might be standing, like you say, in front of that Big Ben or whatever it is, or um, St. Paul's, but quite often it's you just by yourself, in nature how important to you has that has nature been in your kind of journey and when you coach people do you kind of actively um make them seek that out is it somewhere that you feel particularly connected like what is what does that mean to you um yeah it's it's a it's, it's for me it's a really easy win to mm. kind of return to yourself um dr chatterjee talks about fracturals yeah and how just the different geometry 
Geom- geometrical. Geom- why can't I say that word? Geom- geometrical. Geometrical, <laughs> sorry. Geometrical shapes um, in nature are so foreign to what we see in, indoors. Yeah. And they actually stimulate hormones that or they decrease our cortisol levels just through the simply looking at the different shapes in nature, for yeah. example. Yeah. And um, I know that a stressful day can quickly be resolved, but, but with a quick walk around the park, well, not quick, but going, you know, I'm returning and just reconnecting to myself and not distracting, taking myself away with everything, but just being present and being mindful of what's around me um, is, a, is a fairly cheap win, mm. really. Um, but it almost seems too basic. Yeah. And uh, in London, I feel like it's, it's key, you know, a walk in Richmond Park or something like that. R- Wandsworth Common is near me, which has got some nice bits and... You know, I'm, I, I get frustrated by the sort of the co- just the concrete in London everywhere. You feel like w- w- what's underneath that? Once upon a time, this was this beautiful landscape. Now I'm just walking on this concrete surrounded by people. And am I naturally meant to be so surrounded by so many people all the time this, in these crowds? You know, is that how we've, we're meant to have evolved? And all these different things. And it's very easy to miss nature, particularly in London. Mm. And um, Which is ironic because I think it's one of the greenest city major yeah. cities isn't it like we have yeah. a lot of open spaces and a lot of parks yeah but yeah. you still there still has to be effort there on a personal level to seek it out because you can just go from your bed to the tube to the office to your lunch break at your desk to the tube to home to the tv to bed and do it all again the next day and it, it you know anything any of these things that we're talking about requires effort and if you really want to kickstart your healing journey or your mental health journey or whatever it is you really have to just sit with that th- with that idea, I think, of, you know, the change is going to come from me and I've got to put myself in the, in the kind of unnormal bracket here because I've got to do what people, other people aren't doing. They might be fine and that, that's fine for them. But if you've recognised that you have an issue or a problem and you have to seek out different things or make time for yourself or make your own lunch and take it with you because you're allergic to stuff or have an hour's walk every morning and get up that bit earlier. And I think maybe that's the hard thing for people these days because everything for us is so easy. We've created this society where we can order food at the touch of a button. We have instant gratification via our TVs. We press a button and the coffee comes out of the machine. Like everything is so simple. But actually going back to basics and healing in the way that we need to as humans is not easy. No, it's not. Everything's just made, in in theory, simpler and simpler, isn't Mm. it? But actually, going for walks in the park, um, I mean, it seems so simple and basic, but it doesn't fit into the stereotypical day. No. No, really does it. No. You know, it's not seen as productive or or health. I'm not saying healthy, actually, but it's not seen as productive. It doesn't fit into my sort of ambition um, rant, I guess. Yeah, or like you might see people like jogging furiously, or they might be walking and listening to a podcast whilst yeah. checking their emails, and yeah. that just has that's got yeah. to stop, in my view. Yeah. If you're in nature, just disconnect. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't, you don't need headphones, you don't need your phone. Yeah. Just an hour without that, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's healthy. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. The cha- the challenge for me is that I don't think people see it as you don't get the instant win from it. You don't want, you know, if you go exercise, you sweat or you, you know, you build muscle in the gym or you lose fat, whatever it is you're doing, you can sort of physically, physically see it at the end. Whereas things like meditation or a walk in the park in nature, you can't, there's nothing physically to, to be able to witness the difference mm. at the end of it. So it doesn't feel like a, a win. Mm. Um, we've become so programmed to, to chase those kind of things. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, like, I remember growing up, um, you know, my mum and dad saying, do you want to go for a walk? And I was always like, why do I want to go for a walk? I don't yes, me walk. too. And now but I love But it's like my favourite thing yeah, now. Yeah, I love walk. What d- is I like it about being a kid? I don't know. And just like hating walking. Because I think <laughs> as, as kids, we are, we're so programmed into instant wins. We just, we, we, c- we, work, we can quickly work out what things we like and what we don't. And we're not, for me, I, I enjoy the benefit of, of a walk, fresh air. And in the long run, kind of, you know, it feels like a healthy move. But right there in that moment, a bit like my mor- morning routine, I'm not getting the, uh, the the dopamine hits of the instant win that kids would associate with a good time. So, and they haven't got the, the deep understanding of, of health, I mm. guess, living in a healthy way at a deeper level. Mm. So you just want to quit wins, don't you? Yeah. I, I get it. It's It makes sense. But now I love those things. Yeah. Like what were you going to say about a date? Like I love a date, going for a walk yeah. in the park. Like it's, and it might, and people go, it's boring. You know, I actually see on some, some girls will say on dating profiles, they say, 
you're not interested. Don't don't bother if it's a, you want to meet for coffee. Because they want to be able to walk. put their makeup on and yeah, like yeah. have a glass of wine yeah, and look yeah. all nice and wear heels yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and also be sort of like maybe I don't. Mm, but that's a good vetting system for you because totally, they're not the right girl for you. Totally, I totally agree. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's totally fine. We're not yeah. we're not the same. But yeah, walk in the park. Nice chat. Perfect. I mm. love that. Get to know someone. So good. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a I, fan. Yeah. I want to loop back to this uh, issue around sex because I think, um, I don't know where I saw it. It was either an Instagram post of yours or oh, I was listening to another podcast with you on. Um, and you said something about the last piece in your healing puzzle that you were still working on was this issue around sex. And it really spoke to me because um, I'm not that open about it on Instagram, but hey, followers, I have a, a similar thing, actually very different to yours, but it really resonated because I don't think people talk about sex in podcasts all the time but it's always the same thing and it's always like learn what you like or um, have better communication with your partner and all this stuff and actually if you don't fit into any of those topics it can be quite alienating because it isn't something that people usually do talk about and I just wondered if you wanted to unpack your journey with that and Mm. and tell us how it kind of fits into the healing path that you're on mm, yeah i've actually i've written a letter to its, it's technical term is is uh, retarded ejaculation which is just <laughs> doesn't sound like a great start does it <laughs> no. um but yeah i wrote a letter dear retarded ejaculation thank you thank you for for everything you've done because um it took me on this journey without it i said earlier yeah. i probably wouldn't have done it so i'm grateful and i believe that our bodies do talk to us and when something is showing up physically or internally Often it's a, it's a manifestation of, of, of the lifestyle, the way that we're, we're living. And I for agree. me, I blocked out my, my emotions, you know, from a young age. Um, I am a sensitive man. Um, I'm, I'm learning. My mum's a nurse. She's very kind and sensitive and compassionate. And I had a lot of her energy inside of me. But I was shown by society not to embrace that side. You know, don't be like that. And I blocked out my emotions and I stopped feeling because I was desperately seeking validation. I needed other people's validation and... I thought I needed to do it by being a man and um, mm. adopting the more masculine energy. And um, I always say I, I felt at school it was cooler. The cool guys were the bullies. You know, I, I didn't have that energy inside of me, but they were the ones who I thought were the heroes kind of thing. And it was Arnie and it was Sylvester Stallone. It was Rambo and Terminator and all those kind of figures that I was saying, that, that's the guy I need to be. And yeah. Shut out, buried it all. And... Um, you know, if you think of an orgasm, which fundamentally the challenge that I have is I struggle with that, is um, I guess it's a, it's, it's a, it's a feeling fundamentally, uh, an, an exp- uh, a feeling of kind of ecstasy. And the things with feelings, or the thing with feelings is that you can't choose to just feel the, the ecstasy. You, you, you can't just choose the good times. You either feel, in which case you feel the, the good, the bad, and the great, and the amazing. You feel both spectrums. You can't just choose one end. Right, yeah. And I was blocking out the whole spectrum. So, you know, sex was a process, really, for me. I kind of wasn't feeling a huge amount. There wasn't much going on. Mm. Now, I'm I'm sort of second-guessing. I've been on my own journey, and I don't know if there's science that can back all this up maybe one day, but uh, it's not there now. But this is my understanding, and blocking out my emotions, my feelings, and not living authentically. There was a lack of self-love within me. All these things... um, kind of created this cocktail of energy inside of me that's like well if that's how you're going to live you're not going to get much out of, of this either you can't pick and choose you can't just have the good time you if you're going to numb out stuff you're going to be numb mm. and that's how i felt it um so the, the challenge with it is that i didn't do any work on any of this stuff till i was 30 so in which case it was all pretty well ingrained in me and and you know i've been sexually active for 12 years and th- and sex had become something that that was how it was that's all i knew and uh, that's how it operated for me. Mm. You know, I did an orgasm. And um, so I've gone on this journey now and I've, I've, I've opened up and I feel a lot more and I'm way more connected to, to my emotions and it's beautiful and I love it. And connection is a massive part. That was another thing as well. I, didn't, I never connected with anyone. I, never, I was never vulnerable. So I'd always, sex would be a performance rather than actually feeling in and feeling heart to heart with someone and seeing them and letting myself be seen and all this kind of stuff that I'm now involved in. But at the time I didn't and... Um, so yeah, now I've gone on this journey and I let myself be seen and I want to connect and stuff, but I think my body is still stuck in the same operating system physically. It thinks this is how it operates and it's kind of ingrained. And I think 
I need to shift the energy inside of me in some capacity, whether I'm looking at things like Tantra now, where you know there are, there are, there are skills within us that can move energy in different ways. And we can, mm. somewhat, I read somewhere that we're operating at about 17% of our sexual capacity. Wow. And um, you know, I was like, if I've got whatever that leaves, what does that leave? 73% of, of um, sexual energy to still step into. That gives me a lot of hope. Mm. But I need to shift something, because although my, my, my emotionally I'm, I'm, I'm there and I'm very willing to, to be vulnerable and to connect and mm. all the stuff that we hear more stereotypically uh physically i'm still in the same space yeah. so that's kind of feels like the, the journey will always will, i'll never be complete it's not like if i if i change my sexual energy and i have a different experience sexually then i'll bingo ben's perfect mm. you know it's not like yeah, yeah. that but it, it's it's the remaining big chunk of my puzzle that still hasn't changed hasn't shifted yeah so um i'll know when i make that change because i'm sure i will yeah uh, that you know, it's another sign of for me how far I'm I'm, I'm moving and, and the progress I'm making mm. and the changes I'm, I'm I'm embodying. I think it's it's so interesting from my point of view as a woman because stereotypically I've always assumed that sex for men is just a case of like pointing and shooting, like <laughs> really simple, <laughs> and that women are the ones with all the kind of complex issues because um, everything for us is more on the inside and. And as as females, we have to biologically, we have to feel safe in order to orgasm in, or in order to have sex. And then when you look at our lives these days, um, we are operating in our sympathetic nervous system 100 percent of the time. We're not actually activating our PNS, which is our rest, digest, procreate stage, because sex for women biologically is is procreation. It's it's bringing a child into the world. And you can only do that if you feel safe like you're not going to be attacked or you're not in danger but we are in danger all the time these days from from just our levels of stress and the way we live our, uh, live our lives but I never really considered that that might have a not have an effect for men because I assumed naively that everything was just so much easier so it's really interesting to hear from your side of things that actually like it can just not happen definitely yeah. yeah i'm told that it's it's way more common than than, than people we think. think yeah but i still don't have loads of women turning around and going i experienced this with a with a guy and, mm. and so it's not can't be hugely common but um but for sure yeah i you know we are energy and mm. um i think we, if we we don't if we're not acting in accordance with our sort of deepest values and living very authentically and truly and really have a, a, a deep love for ourselves then there's going to be implications somewhere mm. down the line. And for some people that can be emptiness or depression or feeling stuck or whatever it can be. And for me, for whatever reason, it showed up sexually and yeah, yeah it shows how integrated our whole bodies and, and Massively. everything is. You yeah, know? Yeah. Um, but for sure. I, I mean, uh, for a long time, my friends called it a gift. You know, my 20s, mm. they were kind of, I've got the other problem. Uh, right. You know, I could, I'd love a bit of that. Um, how can you do it? And it's for me, it was just the first time I ever had sex. That's how it was. I didn't have mm. any. It's just how it was. Mm. Um, uh, it's weird. And yeah. I would love to. A dream of mine will be to obviously go. I'm going to go on this journey, continue to go on this journey, and to learn so much about it and to, to help men with this in the future. Mm. I hope. Yeah, I mean, it sounds from everything that that you've said today that you really have the tools to help a lot of people and I'm I'm sure you do with your coaching and it's wonderful to speak to someone that's so invested in our mental health I'm the same as you I don't like that term it's just become too faddy and too too commonly used mm. um I think it's about I think everything I mean and I'm you know I help I I help people through chronic illnesses not so much mental stuff but it does play a huge part. And I think it's always about tuning in. And I say this to everyone, like tune into your body. You're your own best doctor. How do you feel? And if you can't access that, then whatever chronic health condition you're dealing with, even if it's something that doesn't feel connected, like, you know, gut health or hormonal imbalances, whatever it is, you just, it's, you're never going to get there because you really have to dial in. And I think it's just relevant in every aspect of our lives, isn't it? And certainly sounds like that's what you're kind of coaching people through as well. 
Totally, yeah. If we're not in tune with how we feel, I think we just go through life in autopilot and mm. just tick the boxes of what society shows us. And Lose often that so doesn't much. work. Yeah. Yeah, we're all individual. We're all authentically different in the energy inside of us, but yet we all try and pigeonhole ourselves into being what conforms. Yeah. And I uh, don't think that's helpful for a lot of people. No. And um, we've got to tune in. I mean, again, it goes back to my whole thing, but things like meditation or just connecting with yourself, spending time in silence, feeling within yourself what's actually what do i feel now rather than running away and constantly filling myself with instant gratification mm. what am i feeling inside of myself that doesn't feel ambitious and if you say oh, i just i'm just going to spend an hour on my own you're right yeah you know, what are you doing that for <laughs> like that's that, like it's lazy almost yeah. but actually we need you know all my uh, so much of my work that I, I've, I've grown into has been done by spending time in solitude, you know, on retreats, giving myself time to process and feel and connect with myself, learn who I actually am, because for a long time I wasn't who I actually am. Mm. And uh, you can't, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what your deepest values are, good luck living in tune with them. Yeah. But it's society doesn't teach us to connect like that, it teaches us to be busy. If you could give, give people a couple of quick wins then from kind of what we've talked about or tips or things that they can kind of absorb into their daily life, what would they be? It's, it's not, as, and this is the thing, and it's really interesting the way you ask that. And I, I don't mean to make this make you wrong. As in, like, it's not quick. that simple. They yeah. aren't quick. Yeah. This isn't a quick game. Um, whether it's like something like spend time, spend ten minutes in the morning just with yourself without your phone, or yeah, you know, tangible things, things like that. That I think are a nice entry point into what yeah. we've discussed today. Totally, and I didn't mean to sort of make this. But I've rebuked I, my uh, <laughs> initial <laughs> question. <laughs> No, but I, you know, this is part of the conversation. No, I think right. the first part is to understand there's, there isn't a quick win. Yeah. So, so don't think oh, I'm doing 10 minutes of meditation every day and it's not fixed me. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, my fundamentally, my philosophy that I try to live by now is to, as I say, don't sacrifice what you want now for what you want most. Because I think society teaches us to constantly go for what we want now. And that's serving our ego, that's serving, creating quick wins. And, we're, and society's going, brilliant, well done, well done, great, 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 great. Um, but inside, the, 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 the energy inside of us, whatever you want to call it, your heart or soul or whatever, your gut, that's craving something very different from quick wins. That's craving connection and, and um, creativity and self-expression and love, all this kind of stuff. And none of those things are quick. You can't mm. just quickly just do them. I'm just going to quickly go and connect with someone. I'm quickly going to fall in love with someone. Um, I'm quickly going to go and find my purpose. It takes time to, to really know who you are and then to really establish exactly how you can go about being that person and doing things that sometimes are hard, but because you know they're on track for your deeper purpose. It's mm. not a quick win. It's not what you want now, but it's what you want most. Um, I always use an example of, uh, I got asked to speak in a prison a few months ago, and then when the email came in, my, my sort of ego, the thing that chases quick wins, was like, absolutely not, unpaid. You know, there's no quick win in that. It's going to be challenging, unsafe perhaps, da -da -da -da, all these problems that society would say don't do internally my gut was saying oh you're gonna have to do this this mm. is what an opportunity to go and make an impact like this is on track this is the purpose this is ben this is who i want you to be this is where yeah. i want you to go so i remember through gritted teeth writing back to the email saying thank you so much for the opportunity i'd love to be there and turning up and doing that and walking out really challenging incredibly challenging incredibly difficult much easier to just stay at home and sit on my sofa but having done it, I'd just grown and I felt alive because it was what I wanted most. It was who I wanted to be. So for me, it's constantly playing this game of life where I'm trying to do what matters most to me, not what I want right now. Sometimes the two are in conflict. Mm. But if you can distinguish between that. So that is, and that's not a quick, and no. that's not a quick one, but, it, it, but it's, that's a, the it's a quick choice. Yeah, it's yeah. every time we can make those quick, is this going to the gym? For a lot of people, I don't want to do it right now. I'm tired, it's cold outside, it's raining. Don't fancy walking to the gym or doing exercising, but actually, and if you if you you can sit on your sofa for an hour and do nothing, and you'd feel kind of oh I've, I've relaxed or whatever. If you go to the gym, you don't want to do it. You go through the grind. You, you, it's painful. It's hard. When you walk out of that gym an hour later, you've got a sense of pride. You're proud of who you are. You've just challenged yourself. You've just done something. You feel healthier. You feel better on the inside. You've just grown. Mm. That is, do you know what I mean? It's distinguishing yeah. between these things and making choices that serve you better. Yeah. Um, that's my nice. that's my quick win. <laughs> it's not quick I love at all. It. Distinguishing between things, making choices that serve you better. Making services. Love yeah, that. Yeah, making choices that serve you better. Amazing. Yeah. So Ben, I've got three questions I ask everyone to close the podcast. Um, the first is, what's one thing in life you'd do again if you could? Um, 
wow my, my, the response that comes to me uh right now is, is uh, it's cliche but i wouldn't change anything i wouldn't do anything again because everything has taught me lessons that have led me to where i am now and i feel excited and alive mm. um obviously there were highs there were brilliant trips i had some amazing times that i'd love to repeat but i don't know it's all everything shaped me to where yeah. i am now and quite a common answer you're probably know, not I'm sorry. unsurprised it's a cliche. to hear it's no a cliche, no i think it? it's it's a cliche but it's a cliche for a reason it is everything's taught me i'd love yeah. to do more traveling i, I want to do so i guess that kind of i've mm. done lots of traveling but i'd like to do it again with a more open mind i guess okay fall in love yeah i'd like to do that differently what's one thing you'd change if you could <laughs> I guess the thing I'm trying to change <laughs> is is my um, experience around sex. Okay. You know, that's that's my deepest thing right now, yeah. I guess. That's the thing I would love to change, yeah. That would be a lovely thing to change. <laughs> and finally, the podcast is called State of Mind. What does state of mind mean to you? Um, state of mind for me is how, how you feel because your mind will impact how you feel. How your mind is thinking will determine it, what emotions you experience. It's as simple as that. I think emotions could be called reactions because they react to what you're thinking. So I'm always conscious of my state of mind is going to directly impact what I experience internally. Mm. So we don't have a choice of what we think, but we do have a choice of how we manage our thoughts. And um, can we spend time... Um, uh, really focusing in on the thoughts that serve us rather than the thoughts that are going to create a negative knock-on effect, effect by impacting us. Nice. Badly, yeah. Amazing. I don't know, is that a common answer as well? They probably can get all sorts of No, answers. I think that was really nice. Dialing in on the thoughts that are going to serve you, basically. Yeah. Because they impact how you feel. Yeah, you yeah. condense my message so much better than me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Ben. No, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure Yay. to chat. <laughs> <laughs>